Evie Spencer, formerly Mahalik, started keeping hermit crabs in 2020. Later that year, she became active in hermit crab rescue and advocacy and created Hermit Harbor Rescue and Adoption. In early 2021, she joined the Lycos community as a foster provider and adoption facilitator for captive bred babies. She achieved Lycos approved seller status and then set her sights on becoming a Lycos local rep. With all adoptions and advocacy work now under Lycos, she operates Hermit Harbor on a part-time basis as an online store for shells and nutritional supplements. Evie has a somewhat unusual fascination with shells and thoroughly enjoys helping crab keepers with this challenging aspect of their care. With the help and support of her husband, Jeremy, Evie displayed the Lycos Advocacy Booth at several reptile expos in 2022. Evie and Jeremy plan to continue assisting with Lycos outreach and education goals in the coming years. Please welcome Evie Spencer. My name's Evie and I am a Lycos local rep. Becca is doing this video with me all about advocacy. We were asked to do this video to help educate people on what Lycos does at the Reptile Expos and encourage more people to join in the advocacy work that we do. So in this video, Becca and I did a Q&A format to help answer some common questions and maybe alleviate some of the concerns people might have about becoming an advocate. I will be talking over my slideshow, a bunch of pictures from the different expos and some videos. Becca did some great recordings and offers a lot of wonderful information. So we hope you'll enjoy this and thank you for watching and taking part in CrowdCon 2022. I started advocacy because I think that these guys are totally worth it. They're awesome little creatures. They are very important in their natural environment. And in our tanks, they're very exciting to watch. They're fun. They just have their own personalities. And if I'm not going to advocate for them, who will? They need someone, and I love these little guys. I did, you know, weeks worth of research when I first got my, my first two hermit crabs, and I see a need for other people who maybe didn't know that they needed to research before they got their first hermit crabs. I think most hermit crabs are purchased on a whim, at a souvenir shop or their one at the fair or something like that. So people just don't realize that they're not disposable pets. They're not a prize to be won. They are a life and it's up to us to make sure that their life is as good as possible. So for me, advocacy means that I have to educate others so that their hermit crabs can have a life as good as my hermit crabs have and as good as someone else's hermit crabs have. We want to make sure that just because they can't live on the beach anymore doesn't mean they can't have a satisfying and fulfilling life. We want to make sure through advocacy that we educate people and help as many hermit crabs as possible. Hermit crabs broke my heart. I bought my first crabs and learned later how cruelly they're treated in the pet trade. 
It seemed to me that hermit crabs could be the most inadvertently neglected and abused pet due to lack of knowledge and misrepresentation by profit-motivated sellers. It was out of sympathy and compassion for not only the crabs, but also pet owners, that I decided to do rescue and advocacy work. Initially, I created my own rescue that my kids and I named Hermit Harbor, but then I met Mike Vukoder through a Facebook group. Mike is a Lycos local rep and provides foster care for a lot of crabs. He became a mentor to me and inspired me to join Lycos. It was easy to see that joining Lycos had many advantages over running my own rescue, so I applied to become a foster home. Then I became an approved seller and turned Hermit Harbor into more of an online store, and then I applied to become a local rep. Now I run all of my fostering and adoptions through Lycos and do whatever I can manage to advocate for these amazing little animals. I think what I like most about advocacy is being able to see people's faces when they realize just how incredible these creatures are. So I've had a number of times where people come in to the shows, they go up to my booth and they go, wow, your hermit crabs are out. They're running around. I've never seen my hermit crabs. They just burrowed and and that was it i've never seen them since so i'm able to tell them how to make their hermit crabs happier and that of course makes them happier but it makes the hermit crabs have a better life overall and knowing that every person i educate will either a not purchase a hermit crab from the beach shops or B, if they already have purchased one, they're going to go home and fix that enclosure for their crabs. They're going to make sure that they have fresh water and salt water and deep substrate because I'm giving them the education that they were lacking before. And I think that's the, my favorite thing is passing on my knowledge. You know, that's part of why I started here, so I could pass on my knowledge. And it just is very rewarding when people are so happy to say, oh, I'm going to go home and I'm going to fix my crab's tank and I'm going to make it better for them. It, that's, that's honestly one of my favorite parts. I love helping crabs and people learning new things, teaching people, and connecting with other devoted crab keepers. Lycos is an incredible organization that is dedicated solely to improving conditions for all hermit crabs, including captive bred babies, wild caught pets, and the wild populations that simply need people to care. Stacy and Mary are so dedicated, knowledgeable, and driven to make things better for all hermit crabs and pet owners. They've presented me with a lot of wonderful opportunities that I wouldn't have if it weren't for them and the Lycos organization. The positive impact we make at these shows is greater than I expected and is incredibly rewarding. I get to help current crab keepers and educate potential crab keepers so they get started with the right information. It may sound counterintuitive, but I consider talking people out of hermit crab ownership to be a success. By accurately conveying what having hermit crabs is like, such as more expensive than you think, pet sand is boring and unavoidable, they shouldn't be taken out and played with, and they hurt when they pinch. People don't have to learn the hard way that hermit crabs aren't the pet for them. I think my most memorable interaction would be the very first show that you and I did together. Um, that one, there was a, a little boy 
maybe nine years old at the most. Um, he and his brothers and his mom and dad were all staring at the tank. Everyone was enamored with it, but especially this little guy. And, you know, most kids, they'll ask a question or two, but, you know, you know, the kinds of questions kids normally ask, you know, it's kind of silly or maybe not, um, I don't want to say not important, but not something that relates to the overall well-being of the hermit crab. They'll ask something like, oh, well, can I give them a soccer shell instead of a football shell? Is that okay? But no, this little guy, um, he had just great question after great question. You know, we were explaining, like, how he needs six inches of substrate in order to molt. And so his question was, okay, well, what is molting? So we explained what molting is. And then, you know, he's like, oh, well, so after they molt, that means they get bigger. Does that mean they need bigger shells then? You know, he was just putting all the pieces together. And honestly, he kind of, <laughs> he kind of ran his own lesson plan there. It was pretty great. Um, but the whole time, he just had stars in his eyes, and it was completely adorable. And to this day, I wish we had had that on recording because, honestly, he would have, he practically wrote his own commercial for Hermit Crab Advocacy. It was fantastic. So if you're considering advocacy, some of the biggest things you have to be aware of beforehand is the time commitment, the monetary commitment, and the need to educate people without judgment. So time commitment, first of all. Going to these shows is going to take you a lot of hours to prepare everything at home. You've got to print out different things for people to read. You've got to chat with vendors and see if you can get some documentation from their business. You've got to create something to draw people in, whether it be like the painted shell trees that Evie and I have, or something more like what Stacy has, where it's the, the mesh bucket full of painted shells. I also like to include stickers. Those are a pretty big deal for kids. You know, all kids love stickers, and that's one of the first things that they're drawn to when they get to the table. Also, with the monetary commitment, you know, going to these events, it's a weekend thing. So you drive to this location, which maybe is right around the corner from your home. Maybe it's a couple of hours. Maybe it's more than a couple of hours. I know Stacy goes states away. So far, I've most I've gone is a couple of hours. I know Evie's gone quite a few hours away from her home. Also, you know, once you get to these locations, you have to sleep somewhere. So you've got to get a hotel room. You know, all the materials that you supply for your table, you know, those do cost. And you can get a lot of people to donate a lot of things. But you will inevitably come out of pocket a little bit. Um, so the financial commitment, there, there is definitely some, though it's not as significant as it could be. Um, but the most important part is teaching people without judgment. It's really easy for someone to say, oh my God, you're killing your hermit crabs. How could you do that? But the person hearing that doesn't want judgment. They want help. They want an education. So if we judge them and make them feel inferior or make them feel stupid or make them feel like we think that they're wrong, then they're not going to listen to us and they're not going to take what we've said to them seriously. So we have to be able to explain, well, this is the best way to do this and here's why, um, but we can't, we can't make it in a way that just sounds pushy or mean. So you do have to be very careful and very cognizant of how you speak to people because if you don't 
we can push people away, and that's completely the opposite of what we want. Becca did a great job answering this question. I'll just expand on some of her key points. Regarding vendor documentation, we hand out business cards and other printed materials from Lycos approved sellers. Stacy Griffith has put together a great packet of documents that we print out to distribute. Stacy May from My Hungry Hermit provided a beautiful display with grocery lists to give out. Meredith Haas from Lucky Crab Company sent business cards along with my order for her 3D printed pools. In the baby tanks, I have a few pieces of Mary Akers pottery from Earth Water Fire Studio. All Lycos approved sellers are welcome to send business cards for us to hand out. I created a lightweight 29 gallon display tank to bring to the shows so people can see what a proper Crabitat looks like. To cut the weight and keep it portable, I built a foam box and poured substrate around and on top of it. The monetary commitment is a consideration, but I have to mention that Show Me Reptiles and Exotics allows Lycos to set up for free. They're an awesome organization and we appreciate everything they do for us. If you've considered advocating, you may have feared that you aren't knowledgeable enough to be valuable. Don't give up so easily. You don't need to know everything. You should have more than basic knowledge of crab care, but more importantly, know where to direct people to find the information. Know the limitations of your knowledge and be comfortable saying, I'm not sure, but I know where to look or who to ask. You need to be comfortable talking to strangers, sorta. It's not bad at all, just have a few conversation starters. You'll do well engaging with kids so you can teach the parents about crabs. Then they can decide, or at least consider, whether crabs are an okay pet before their kids are begging for one in a painted shell at a boardwalk shop. So we need advocates because, first of all, there are never enough. <laughs> You know, we've got Stacy doing shows. Um, we have Amanda doing shows now. Evie and I do shows. And, I mean, four or five people doing shows once every few months, you know, that's a lot of time for, for the five of us or the six of us or however many there are at this point. Um, but not a lot of spread. So... The more advocates we can get, the more places we can educate people. You know, I'm here in Georgia. Evie's in Florida. I know Stacy does, like, Ohio, Indiana, that kind of area. And Amanda does uh, North Carolina. So, I mean, what about the people in California? They have beaches. They have beach shops. They need this advocacy program just as much as people do here on the East Coast. So... The more advocates we can get, the better things go for the hermit crabs. Also, you know, more advocates means more education. So we can all help out people who are new to hermit crabs. We can teach them. And we can also direct people towards Mary Acres with the captive bred babies. Because the more captive bred babies are out there, the less people are going to buy these hermit crabs that have been abused and stolen from the beaches. And eventually, that could lead to these hermit crabs not being stolen off the beaches at all. You know, if we can create a change where people seek out captive bred hermit crabs, then they won't be stolen from their homes anymore and we'll no longer have to worry about wild-caught crabs. Becca nailed this one. She said everything I would have said with the exception of mentioning Mike who took over the Tampa area shows. He is involved in other ways, advocating at local schools and other events. He also volunteers for a parrot rescue and recently did an Earth Day event at Lake Eola in Orlando. One table for parrots, another table for Lycos. 
Stacy used to handle these almost exclusively by herself, but she's recently recruited a few more local reps. We need more Lycos local reps covering more territories. So I advocate specifically uh, in the shows I advocate here in the state of Georgia. Um, so far, I've done shows in Grovetown, Georgia. That's about two and a half hours away from me. I have considered going to the Marietta shows as well. Those are a little closer to me, but they also tend to kind of join up really close to the Grovetown shows, which I've already committed myself to. So sometimes maybe two weekends in a row seems like a lot. <laughs> um, also, I try to advocate on the Facebook groups. So when somebody posts that they have a problem, I try to make sure that my answers aren't judgmental. I try to make sure that I give them the best answer and fully answer all their questions as best I can. But I also want to make sure that they understand why I gave the answer. So, for example, if someone asks, you know, why is my hermit crab mean? Why is he beating up? Why is he bullying other crabs in my tank? Well, maybe because he doesn't have enough shells available. So sometimes the shells that we offer, they just don't like. So maybe we need to offer some different types or some different sizes Maybe he needs a little more of a variety. Or maybe it's because he doesn't have enough protein in his diet. You know, hermit crabs need about 50% of their diet to be protein. So these are all reasons why they might be a bully. But not just telling them the reasons why they're, they're being a bully, but telling them how to fix them. Because... Fixing the problem requires knowledge. So you give them the knowledge and you give them the tools to fix it on their own. And so for me, I advocate more kind of one on one with like the Facebook groups and whatnot. But the big one, as far as like, you know, the travel and the shows and that, that sort of thing, I'm here in Georgia for right now. I look for opportunities to advocate, not just at the expos. I have a 125 gallon tank set up in the lobby of my pet care business, which attracts a lot of attention and creates opportunities for education. I set up my education table whenever possible at small local events. The last one was a car show that allowed various vendors. I was set up between a guy selling honey and a woman selling handmade bracelets. You might think I would, but I didn't feel out of place at all and had a wonderful time. So when you're doing shows, what can you expect to talk about? Basically, anything and everything hermit crabs. All the stuff that you can't talk to your husband or your wife or your kids or your mom or your dad about because they're tired of hearing about hermit crabs. These people aren't. They've never heard your spiel. They've never heard you just passionately talk about your, your crab tank. You know, they are here to learn from you. If they walk up to your booth at, a, at an advocacy show, at a pet expo, they want to talk to you. They are there to learn. And something I have noticed about a lot of the um, exotic pets group of people like the the people that go to these shows they are very supportive of captive breeding they're very supportive of good husbandry so when they talk to you they actually want the information they're seeking an education so you'll get questions ranging from why is the substrate so deep why do you have so much that seems like a lot so you explain, well, no, um, the reason we have so much is because they have to be able to molt safely. They dig down, they build themselves a cave. 
and at some point during their molting process they are completely immobile and because of that they are very vulnerable and especially to their tank mates so that deep substrate allows for them to molt safely and also they just enjoy tunneling sometimes so if they want to go down for a, a little excursion that deep substrate helps with that um and you know people also ask you know one of my favorite questions is always do they use that wheel because i make sure to put one of the hamster saucers in my display tank and that hamster saucer always gets everyone's attention they're like do they use that <laughs> and and you tell them yes they actually do use that you know these guys are being being a little lazy on the back corner they're trying to hide but here's a video on my phone of my hermit crabs dancing on the wheel. And so they look and, and they watch the video and you can just see them just, their faces light up, they're laughing and they're like, wow, man, I never would have expected that. My hermit crabs that I had as a kid, they just sat there. And that leads into the conversation of, okay, well, why did my hermit crabs just sit there and yours are so active? And then you can lead into more information. So, okay, well, you gotta have this, this heat, this humidity, you've gotta have these types of food products. You know, this is for their health and this is for their enrichment. And this wheel gives them exercise and they enjoy it because they love to walk miles and miles and miles every day in nature. So the more information you give someone who is really husbandry focused, the more information they ask for. And, you know, so you really can expect to just talk and talk and talk. And by the end of it, you're so tongue tied and you just need to sit down for a minute and you don't want to talk about hermit crabs for a little while after you're done with these shows because you've just, you know, constantly been answering questions and and just advocating your tail off and honestly it's great and it's fun and you really you really feel rewarded after after the fact especially when you get those kids that are just you know light up like a kid in a candy store or you get the adults that say man i'm going to go home and i'm going to fix our crabs tank i'm so excited to help him out i'm, I'm going to give him a better life and you know you really truly can just answer every question under the sun so so definitely make sure you have your knowledge ready and be confident in talking to people because you will get a lot of talking in you will talk a lot about setting up a proper crab habitat, substrate heat and humidity modified gills a proper diet worm castings and green sand over collection and extirpation of wild hermit crabs, the hundreds needing adoption, how expensive and finicky they can be, how boring pet sand is, how intelligent and social the crabs are, and of course, sharing videos of crabs on wheels. I like to bring Mary's captive bred babies to the expos. They draw a lot of attention. I created a tree to display toxic painted shells and have an assortment of suitable shells nearby for comparison. I like to bring extra green sand and worm castings to give to newly educated crab owners. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. Becca and I hope you found this informative and thought provoking. If you want to join Lycos in advocating, please apply through their website, lhcos.org. If you have a Show Me Reptiles and Exotics Expo in your area, please show your support by visiting the show and maybe thank them for helping us. There are many other ways to improve the lives of hermit crabs, and we hope you'll take an interest in helping out.